When it comes to injuries, there are very few players in world football who has had the kind of experience that Neymar has been subjected to over the past few years. Well, the breaking news regards the most expensive footballer, the world's most expensive player in football history. Neymar. 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 He's going to miss the rest of the season. It requires surgery after seriously injuring his knee. Ankle injury. His ACL. Swollen ankle. He ruptured his ACL and tore his meniscus. He says here that a Brazilian forward has suffered 16 injuries since 2018 which when analyzed in terms of days total to him being sidelined for about 640 days. He's recently suffered yet another injury during one of the previous international breaks which is said to rule him out for an extended period of time. He is out for the rest of the season. Neymar has only played 17 matches in 2023 so far, the fewest he's ever played in a calendar year throughout his entire career. Life for Neymar just seems to have turned into a bit of a disaster since he left Barcelona. Neymar's injury history is certainly one of the weirdest ones you would ever see. When viewing it purely statistically, the thing that often stands out here are the frequencies and the length of the layoffs, but there have been much bigger stories or controversies surrounding these injuries that stats naturally will not be able to point out. Players like Neymar may attract a lot more aggression from opposing players. The reason why he gets injured has also been hotly debated. He invites people to kick him, he invites people to challenge. And when you do that, eventually, you're going to get hurt. Tell Neymar to calm down or we're going to take care of him. Tell Neymar to calm down or we're going to take care of him. As well as the controversy surrounding a specific time every year when he seems to get injured. Here is why quite possibly Neymar has one of, if not the weirdest injury record in football history. When you watch Neymar play, there is no doubt he is an entertainer, a trailblazer, a magician. He's the kind of player you show any casual fan if you have the intention of converting them to lifelong fans. Everything about how he plays football is just magical. However, with everything beautiful comes a cost, as this magic is widely regarded as a reason why he's constantly been getting injured. According to stats provided by B Soccer, Neymar was the most fouled player in Europe since 2016, which at the time the report was published, it stated that he suffered more than four fouls per game. The reason for this has heavily been debated amongst fans and pundits respectively, with the overall gist being that Neymar's style of play has been deemed to be too provocative, hence why he constantly gets targeted by opposition defenders who were clearly not down to being featured in one of the world famous YouTube skills compilations that have often been created about him every now and then. The issue surrounding this is at the time he was still at Paris Saint Germain, as well as being the most expensive signing, was expected most of the time to not get injured. Because for every time he was sidelined, the team got weaker, and if he happened to pick up an injury during the knockout stages of the Champions League, which for the club is the most important time of the season, considering that would decide if they were winning the highly coveted trophy, that would represent a small setback in terms of time, money, and resources invested on the player. But this would be even worse if he was constantly getting sidelined during this period of the year every single year and well that's exactly what happened while injuries are completely accidental and happens when a player least expects it Neymar does get injured during crucial parts of the campaign both at club and international level there was a time at club level where Neymar always seemed to be either suspended or carrying one injury or another during this time which coincidentally is the same month of his sister's birthday Neymar's sister Rafaela's birthday falls on the 11th of March now anyone who's seen pictures of Neymar and his sister would easily spot that the the two are very very close and so he rarely misses her birthday. The ludicrously coincidental nature of this has been subject of memes online with several fans insinuating that he was probably intentionally missing these matches so he could attend his sister's birthday every year, as a joke of course. And while this was played for laughs, it did signify a less than ideal pattern with regards to the frequency at which he was getting injured at this time. The first two years, 2015 and 16, he missed matches not because of injury but rather due to suspension. In 2015, the Brazilian accumulated his fifth yellow card of the league season during Barca's match against Granada, directly leading to a suspension, which also meant he was ruled out for the following fixture, which happened to be taking place three days before his sister's birthday. Barcelona, in a bid to keep one of the best players happy, decided to let him travel to Brazil to attend her birthday. In 2016, same thing. 2017, however, while still at Barca, when it happened, signified a taste for things to come. After orchestrating the famous remontada as Barca overturned a 4-0 deficit to beat Paris Saint-Germain 6-1 at home with Neymar front and center of it, he reportedly had an abductor's problem, meaning for the third straight season he was not going to be available during this period. <laughs>
In 2018, while now at PSG, after playing the first leg of the round of 16 tie against Cristiano Ronaldo's Real Madrid, he suffered a broken motor torso during the team's league on clash against Marseille. And so, ahead of the second leg, he flew over to Brazil for surgery. In 2019, he had a reoccurrence of the issue as the last year once again primed to miss that period of the season. The club released the following statement. Initial examinations have revealed a painful reoccurrence of his injury to the fifth metatarsal of his right foot. The treatment of this injury will depend on how it evolves over the next few days. The result? He was out of action from late February to April. In his absence, PSG were humiliated in the Champions League second leg against a Manchester United team that comprised of many of their youth players who proceeded to knock them out of the competition with all this playing right in front of him. In 2020, despite picking up a suspension due to a red card, he was actually fit to play, helping PSG to the Champions League final, conceding the trophy to Bayern Munich. In 2021, he was injured again. He was fully available for PSG in 2022, but did little to prevent the cruel fate Real Madrid forced upon them. And in 2023, he suffered yet another injury, stretched off in a league match against Lille. Really disappointing news for Neymar because he is out for the rest of the season. This is what PSG have reported. He's had several episodes of right ankle instability in recent years. Paris Saint-Germain medical staff recommended a ligament repair operation in order, they say, to avoid a major risk of recurrence. All the experts consulted confirmed this need. The surgery is going to be performed in the coming days in Doha and they expect a delay of three to four months. Club level, however, is not only the place where Neymar got unlucky with his injuries. On the international stage, there are examples like the 2014 FIFA World Cup. Hosted by his home country, Neymar was a poster boy for the entire 200 million populace of Brazil and he had a great tournament. However, the quarter-final match against Colombia was when everything went dark. Branded as a criminal tackle in the Brazil media, the attacker suffered a devastating injury to his back under the challenge of Colombian defender Camilo Zuniga, which caused him to be stretched out. The tackle undoubtedly ended his World Cup and could have also tragically ended his career. God blessed me in this attack. If it had been two centimeters more, I could have ended ended up in a wheelchair. Many back in Brazil, including the likes of Ronaldo Nazario, believed the tackle was intentional and although Brazil qualified, the events that ensued the following match would make them wish they never did. In Neymar's absence, Brazil got smashed 7-1 by Germany during one of the most darkest nights in Brazilian history. Some football fans still hold the opinion that the result might have been drastically different if Neymar was on the pitch, but it wasn't meant to be. So it's hard to take at such an important moment of my career, ending up injured like that, but it's all part of the game. Another such incident happened right before the 2019 Copa America. Neymar suffered an ankle ligament injury in the first half of a friendly match against Qatar and his reaction says it all. After this, the Brazil national team released this statement on their website ultimately confirming that Neymar was set to miss the upcoming Copa America tournament. After suffering a sprain in his right ankle during last Wednesday's game against Qatar, Neymar was evaluated and subject to tests that confirmed ligament rapture in the ankle. Due to the seriousness of the injury, Neymar will not have the physical condition and sufficient recovery time to participate in the Copa America Brazil 2019. Brazil will go on to win the prize without him, even though they made it to the final again in 2021, this time with Neymar in the team. Lionel Messi's Argentina proved too strong for the Sela Saos. Now we move to the 2022 FIFA World Cup, a tournament in which Neymar's Brazil was one of the favorites. The forward suffered an injury scare in the first match of the tournament against Serbia, with pictures of his swollen ankle trending everywhere online. The most expensive footballer uh, in football history, Neymar. He will miss uh, Brazil's second game in the group uh, at the World Cup um, as a result of his uh, ankle injury. Before that injury, Neymar was fouled nine times with some believing he was intentionally targeted. However, this injury wasn't as serious as it looked and after sitting out the rest of the group matches, he was back in the round of 16 delivering the goods in the match helping them qualify for the quarterfinals, which would eventually seal their fate as they couldn't get past Croatia. He did score in the match but it was unfortunately not meant to be for them. The point is that Neymar's injuries unfortunately 
definitely happens too frequently at the wrong time. Perhaps one could say since he's had so many injuries, getting injured at some of those periods was always likely to happen. While Neymar's injuries always elicit a sympathetic and supportive response from football fans all over, what doesn't is the player he has become due to those injuries. The diving controversies. While diving and simulation has always been part of the game even though it shouldn't, many players ensuring to theatrically throw themselves to the ground to get a favorable decision, mostly a close range free kick or a penalty or maliciously getting another player sent off, Neymar takes diving to a whole different level. The sheer ridiculousness of this nature of diving has undoubtedly tainted his image as a footballer with these theatrics spawning several memes at the height of it, which was during the 2018 FIFA World Cup. Neymar reminded me of when he played in the World Cup where he just decided every time the ball came to him, he he'd go to ground and it was uncomfortable view. In defense of all this, Neymar claims that he dives because the referees aren't protecting him enough on the pitch, which may also be true considering the kind of fouls that are usually allowed to happen to him. Like I said earlier, defenders don't want to be highlights, hence why he becomes the most targeted player on the pitch. Yeah, well that is a part of it. If you have a danger player, you don't want to give them much room and comfort on the playing field. But I think players like Neymar may attract a lot more aggression from opposing players. He invites people to kick him, he invites people to challenge, and when you do that, eventually, you're going to get hurt. Because of the nature of Neymar's dribbling, defenders often go after him with the specific intention of injuring him. I mean, there are players who have gone on record to even admitting it, and not to mention the countless video evidence showing players deliberately targeting him the moment after he pulls off or even tries to pull off something spectacular. Tell Neymar to calm down or we are going to take care of him. This was an actual statement from Dimitri Payet after himself and his Marseille teammates tried to injure Neymar in one of their clashes. It's almost as if they're showboating on you and players, opposing players, don't take those things lightly. Not that it's justified, but I'm just saying that I think because he is like that, I think it would increase the sort of aggression that players employ when, when they're up against him. Neymar just wants to play football and have fun, but his idea of football and having fun is unfortunately not accepted by everyone. So the world's most expensive player requires surgery after seriously injuring his knee whilst playing for Brazil. He ruptured his ACL and tore his meniscus. He's going to miss the rest of the season. 